This video is meant to be a short tutorial on how to utilize Notebook LM, uh, which is a new AI tool from Google. The purpose of Notebook LM is to create a repository of resources of information. Those can look like slide decks, YouTube videos or other videos, um, web links, whatever, wherever you would normally find information uh, to then take all of those and compile them into one thing called a note or a notebook. Um, so you put those all into your notebook, and then from there you can create a resource with which you can interact. Um, so in academia, that might look like um, taking everything from a, a module, um, whether it be slide decks and video resources, PDFs, um, content that you have in, in other files, and then um, putting that into a notebook and then uploading it. Um, students can then um, interact with it and create a study guide. Um, they can uh, interact with it by creating even a podcast. It generates a podcast utilizing AI voices, um, and they can actually interact with the podcast hosts, if you will. They can ask questions of the podcast hosts, and it will search the data um, that you have given it to work from and have interactive conversations uh, with the um, inquirer. So it could be the, the uh, student. It's pretty easy to set up, assuming you have a Google account. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my screen here. And taking a look at Google. And from here, all I'm going to need to do is type in notebook lm.google.com. And it takes me to Notebook LM, and now it begins to um, give me some information about rights and responsibilities, privacy statements, all of those things. And here it tells me how to create my first notebook. <clears throat> so let's take a look here. It tells me I can upload documents. And again, this can be um, different things like slide decks or PDFs or web links, resources, et cetera, whatever I want that information to look like or wherever I need it to come from, I'll upload them. I'm going to convert them into a note. And so it is going to give me a briefing on that information. It's going to compile them, make sense of it, summary, um, but also maintain that information as a repository to uh, interact with. And then from there, I can um, continue interacting with that note in various ways. So uh, let's just go ahead and let's create one here. Here's where I can upload my resources. I can drag and drop any files that I choose from. Again, you'll see that we have uh, PDF files, um, .text, markdown, audio, et cetera. So whatever I need it to look like, you can come from my Google Drive. So if I've got uh, slide decks from uh, Office Suite like PowerPoint, I can upload those into my Google Drive and transfer those right on over. Again, websites on here, YouTube videos that I might use in my course. Um, or I would use a supplementary information. I can link those directly in. And then I can also copy and paste text. So if I have a learning management system like Canvas and I have a bunch of literature in there, um, language in there on my Canvas pages, I can simply copy and paste that right into um, this section here. And then what it's going to do is create a note. Um, so I don't really have anything um, handy that I have been looking at or thinking about. So um, I'll just go ahead and put in a web link uh, of um, something going on. Um, we can put in like uh, Los Angeles fires since that is a topic of discussion at the moment. And again, I can pull any of these. I'm just going to, um, I can grab a YouTube video if I want to. So let's go ahead and take that link. Uh, we'll copy the link. Take that back over here. I'm going to put in my YouTube link. I've not watched this video. I have no idea what is in it. And then I can also take, uh, this is from um, NPR. So let's just take this web link here. And again, I'll copy the link address. And uh, from here. I'd like to upload a source, so I'm going to go back to website link. And then again, um, I can continue uploading sources here for as many things as I had. If I had PowerPoint, slide decks, etc., um, Word documents, PDFs, I can upload any of those um, 
from my Google Drive here. You'll notice the source limit here. So um, eventually it will tell me that's enough information and that's all that it can process. And so I'll, I'll have a cap, um, but it would take several different resources in order for you to hit that cap. So from there I'm done. Uh, the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, allow it to create a note for me. And <clears throat> once I've created my note, um, then it's gonna be able to uh, interact with it and it's gonna do um, whatever I would like it to do. I can, again, create that study guide. Um, I can, seems to be an error here. So these are copyrighted, so it's not going to allow me. That's good information. Um, I can use something different. So I'll use instead. Um, go ahead and just pull up something irrelevant again. Um, we'll pull up something like the Epcot Festival of the Arts that's coming up. Um, and again, I'm going to add a source here. So I'm going to upload my source and I'll just take a website and insert it. And this one's got no uh, restrictions on it. Um, so these here were copyrighted information media sources. Um, so they are not being shared into my Google note. Um, but again, if in your course content, you're going to be okay nine times out of 10 on, on that. Um, my Epcot International Festival of the Arts, this is hosted by um, Disney's website. Um, so there's no copyright information that I have to worry about there. So it reads through the entire website and it produces a summary for me here. Again, I can keep adding things if I wanted to and make it more robust and click on all the sublinks. I can click on uh, people's YouTube reviews if I wanted to do that and continue adding to my arsenal here and building my notebook. So what I'm going to do here is create a note. So I'm going to save to my note. And now it's become a note. So you will notice over here this little yellow document um, icon. And that's denoting that we have a note uh, from which it's going to generate all of its information. I can keep adding sources over here to um, build or extend my note if I wanted to. But from that information, I can create a study guide. And now it's going to generate this study guide for me. I can create a briefing doc. So if I wanted to summarize the material, it'll summarize the material for me. If there were events that took place within um, We'll just do all of these to, to test it out and see what they produce. And a frequently asked questions. And I'm going to generate this podcast here just so that you can see an example of how that functions as well. So we have our original note here. And then from there, we created our study guide. If I click on it, here's our study guide. Um, this is a quick instructions answer the following questions in two to three sentences and now it has questions that it's produced based off of the information information so when did the Epcot International Food Festival of the Arts take place um, and then below it's got the answers for me so I can try to answer all these questions and then come back to it now you see it's not perfect it says answer these following questions in two to three sentences the first one only gives um, I guess two sentences but it really the answer was uh, in just one sentence. The rest is kind of fluff there. But um, so it gives all the answers. It's pulled out uh, information that it thinks is relevant. Uh, we see essay quizzes here as well. And then some key terms that are coming up that um, might be included in my academic vocabulary that I want to make sure students understood or needed to know. And so that was pretty easy. I'm going to go back to the studio here. Let's take a look at um, the next thing that we did we created a timeline and so we see January 17th is when it starts it ends on the 24th so now it tells me there's daily events that are going on and what times those are going on breaks it down further again um, some information about that timeline and then when it ends cast of characters so it's trying to pull out all the information that it received from that website about what is going on and when it's happening and then it delineates those for me um, Frequently asked questions, um, so not like the quiz questions that we saw earlier, but instead 
what would people most likely be asking a lot about um, based on this document? And so it does a pretty good job of making sense of it. What is it? When is it? Um, some additional questions like, is this a separate ticket? Um, what can I do there? So it's done a pretty good job here of what it thinks would be FAQs and has pulled that information. Again, academia, we could use this very similarly in what are common misconceptions for learners. Then we looked at, um, this is the uh, summary response. And so it is taking our, our information and giving us a briefing document of everything that was in that website, or again, all of those different things that we could have added if we wanted to add those slide decks, et cetera. And then gives us a briefing document of everything that's going on. Um, and it, it is written in markdown um, style so we can see our headings and subheadings, et cetera. And then I said there was a podcast and what that looks like. And then we see we have an interactive mode, a beta mode for this podcast and what that looks like. So let's take a look at it. We'll play this here. All right. So you're ready to dive into EPCIAT's International Festival of the Arts with us? Let's go. I want to point that out that it reads EPCOT as EPCOT's International. It doesn't know how to say EPCOT or what EPCOT is. Again, it's in beta testing. Okay. So it's January 13th, 2025. And just imagine you are getting ready for a trip to Disney World. Mm -hmm. And you're super stoked about the Festival of the Arts at EPCOT. Yeah. We've got some excerpts here right from the Walt Disney World website. Okay. To help us guide you through everything you need to know. So you see that they are um, interacting with each other. You can see the tone of it um, as they're setting up this podcast. And they are telling you right up front um, where their resources are coming from, where they get their information, uh, what built the note, et cetera. Um, I'm going to let them keep talking, but then let's be interactive with these podcasters and use them as a coach. Sounds good. So you're ready to like unlock all the secrets of this year's festival? Uh so it is pulling the transcript right now. I'm going to join their podcast. All right, so you're ready to dive into ECOT's International Festival of the Arts with us. Let's go. Okay, so it's January 13th, 2025, and just imagine. Oh, hey there, what's up? Hi, so I was wondering if you could tell me um, one example of a food item that I should absolutely try while I'm there. Oh, absolutely. That's a great question. Yeah, it's a good one. Okay, so while well, we're going to get into all the different food studios a little later. Right, later in the show. Uh, I can definitely tell you about one thing that stands out that's on the wonderful walk of colorful cuisine. Ah, yes. It's the deconstructed BLT from the Deco Delights Food Studio. Oh, that is interesting. I know, right? It's not just your regular BLT. It's got crispy pork belly, tomato jam, and a black pepper brioche. It's like art, but also food. Exactly. It's a perfect example of how the festival combines culinary arts with visual appeal. So, def Oh, back to our listener. What's up? You just talked about the BLT. Do you know how much that's going to cost? It's a really good question. And, you know, it's something that's easy to overlook. Yeah, it's good to be prepared with a budget in mind. Okay, so the website doesn't actually list the specific price of the deconstructed BLT. Right, they don't put the prices online. But from what I can tell from previous festivals, you can usually expect to pay around 8 to $10 for an item like that. That sounds about right for a festival dish. So it's a good idea to plan for that kind of range, especially if you're hoping to try multiple food items at the festival. Yeah, and remember that prices can vary between the different food studios. So it's always a good idea to check the menu boards when you're there. And, you know, it's not just about the price itself. It's about the whole experience, right? Oh, yeah. So I'm going to stop them there, but you can see that they um, did a pretty good job of not hallucinating. So they were pulling up information that they had available and when they couldn't find the exact response to my query, they found a nice way of saying they don't know, um, but then tried to um, acknowledge that it was, they gave their best guess based off of um, prior internet search for prior uh, food festivals. So um, they were good at not giving a false answer um, while still trying to answer my question. And so certainly in academia, we can see where um, <clears throat> if we taught our students how to utilize some, something like this, um, we could then build a tutor or build a coach, um, especially in um, 
courses where students are having struggles. I have not tested it yet with math and working through math problems, so I'm curious on what that would look like. Um, but this is just one more AI tool that we can uh, utilize in order to make our content come alive and more be more interactive with our learners.